Hello Internet, I'm Dan. And I'm Chaz. And this is... No. <laughs> I'm trying to stop. You should probably start it. Also, let me start it. Hey Internet, I'm Chaz. And I'm Dan. Welcome to Wine is Serious Business, episode 187. Uh, we're here today with our friend Matt, who hasn't been, been on for a while, so we're really happy to get him back. And we brought him back because he's a big fan of Arbery Marsh wines. And uh, we got a hold of two bottles from 2011. Uh, we've got the Weber Vineyard and the Marsh Vineyard, is that no, correct? Winderly. Oh, Winder oh, ooh. okay. Uh, fruit, baby. Yeah, Winderly Vineyard and the Marsh Vineyard. Matt's been a fan of him for what, what, two vintages? Yeah, two vintages. Now? Is it, which I think it's only it's like fourth or so. It's fairly new, so. Fairly new, yeah. I'm an old schooler. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I but. Maybe like 07, 06. Oh, did he make 06? I thought it was all part of I thought it was those sevens. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, yeah pr pretty new. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I've been I've been hit and miss on the, on the wine through the years, um, or the few that I've tried. But Matt's been a big fan for a while, so we thought it'd be a great chance to get get some enthusiasm and up front about it. I think it's a stark difference from my last show too, because the last show I was on was the Jamaican wine. I just went so well. <laughs> They just got a comment on uh, on YouTube too. Like when somebody <laughs> said you dr you drank the bad ones. You should pick out some high end Jamaican wine next time you're there. Ooh, oh, that's serious. Oh, that like, oh, wow, Shut I can down. smell this wine just as you guys are swirling it around. Oh yeah. yeah. And these are the 11s too. So they're the thing about these wines too is, and one thing I noticed at least when I had the 10 uh, a couple months ago, like two months ago, is that they still need a ton of time. Like okay. we're drinking these way young. Um, even the 10 was way too young, and this is, I'm sure, is completely young. Probably been open 20 minutes or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And Winterly Vineyard's up on top of the Dundee Hills, too. Yep. Um, what's that road? You remember the name of the road? Oh, no. All right. No. Uh, but yeah, on the good side of the hill, it's uh, <laughs> definitely, yeah. definitely a good vineyard. It smells like Dundee Hills. <laughs> <laughs> all all three of the dirty. Yeah. Pinot Noir here. Yep. Raspberries, strawberries, cranberries, and just covered in dirt. Yeah, covered in dirt, lot, and a lot of like rose, like rose petals. Mm -hmm. um, big flowery component, like maybe like red tea. Um, and there's even that like a little bit of slate, heat, like slate rock, kind of in there, just hanging out gravel mm -hmm. road. Yeah, it's a gravel road for sure. Man, more a little bit of punch, punchy nose too. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Uh, if not as not, not as fruit driven as one might expect from the like when you're staying out here you can really get the fruit but when you get your nose in it it's like a lot of rocks and a lot of earth and, yeah and that's always been the reason why I like it so much is that it is such like an expression of Dundee like it just it's exactly what I love it like everything that I love about Dundee is in his wines so mm. wow nice texture. <laughs> Yeah, great complexity on the nose for sure. That's a little easy drinking. Yeah, it's easy drinking. It's still wow. tight though. I feel like a bit. Sure. I mean, because it's so young, like it. Really this just, just like pops. And yeah. Still, which is interesting. It is showing a little tight. Mm -hmm. Like the fruit flavors here are really, really tart. Yeah. Like there, there are really nice cherries and raspberries. Man, there's a really that. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> they, they, they close up really like tartly on the finish. Not to say that the finish isn't long. I'll feel that, yeah. Right? Yeah, the acidity yeah. is the city is brisk and there is some tan in there that does provide some grip. But uh, It goes silky smooth mid palate though. It's like mm -hmm. it's like tight and acidic up front, super smooth and just like luscious in the middle, and then it just like finishes kinda of tight. Yeah. I agree. The tannins are full, but they still have a really elegant structure to them, which is really impressive right. to me. Like I can feel kind of the dryness mm -hmm. and kind of some intensity, but it never gets really sharp. And the fruit stays really soft. Mm -hmm. Um and, and like complex, like really delicious strawberry flavor showing up late for me. Yeah, and more of those like, and also in the mid palate and kind of like going into the end is that rocky gravel Wonderful. road, just wet, wet rocks too. Yeah. That's killer juice. That's, <laughs> That's really good. Really good. <laughs> I see why you like these guys. Even for being so young, it's like it's popping right now. Mm -hmm. well, the last time I had a bottle one of these was a, an 09 Marsh and just funky and earthy and truffly and like mm -hmm. really really good so i was excited to try these ones because they're a little I, mean, I think the 09 even came at like 13 2 alcohol or something or 13 5. this is 12 these are yeah these are 12 12 8 for that and 12 6 for the marsh so um but it's interesting because i think 2010 is going to be more of an ager than 2011 too i agree least, and like it, i haven't had very many 2011s but compared to the 2010 that i had a few months ago like this is drinking way better right now than the 2010 was mm -hmm. okay. or two months ago. No. Wow. Mm. So uh, 
91 for me, I think. The flavors are really good. The balance is really there. Um, and there's, I, I think, almost certainly going to be improvement in the Absolutely. future. Because it is, yeah, I, I totally agree with what these guys are saying where it's a little tight on the finish. Um, but the balance persists and, and the fruit persists. And I, I feel, man, I feel really good about where this is going. I, I was going to say 90, 91 as well, and pretty much exactly what Dan said. I think the future for this wine is going to be wonderful. Like another three to five years, and this wine is going to be drinking rad. And just, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, it's like, I 91 too. Normally I'm far lower than them, but I totally agree on this one. It's, it's just, it is drinking well now. I could easily go through the entire stash that I bought of it right now. Um, but again, in a couple of years, it's going to be some magic juice. Like it is tight, but there's already a sense of like integration mm -hmm. and and uh, just really over wonderful balance already. That's yeah. And the nose is just killing it. It smells like Dundee. It's like the yeah. funk, complexity, mm -hmm. depth. Like this, that's really got some good stuff. Right? Yeah, we go big four, big rinses on. This. <laughs> we don't we don't mind that. So this is the 2011 March uh, single vineyard bottle Which, from them. And everything I've, and maybe I shouldn't say this before we taste, but everything I've noticed about the March stuff compared to the Winterly is that the Winterly is a little more delicate, okay. it's a little more, and this stuff is like that straight up funk of the day. <laughs> it's that. And, and for those who don't know, Mar George. Marsh is another one of like Oregon's older vineyards, and mm -hmm. it's been around for, you know, for decades, and, and uh, Jim, the winemaker, really likes to talk about working with old fruit. He's, you know, really emphatic about that being important to making high quality wines. Um, yeah, so so they've been at it for I guess they've been at it for decades. They don't know exactly how long, and he's he's part of the family. I'm not it's exactly sure related. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but you know someone older started it. They still make a little bit of like wine out of the, the red barn label, um, but the marsh fruit is, is definitely like coveted in Oregon. Only a few people get to work with it, um, and yes. so it's it's a treat to try. I think it's just now him, Scott Paul, Winderly, and. Yeah, I'm not sure. There's only yeah, there's not very many because he they I think as as of 2011 or 2012 they pulled the you know like his Crowley no longer gets it right anymore. So um, yeah, so it's gonna be interesting. And another interesting note that that kind of inspired us to do this show is that I was reading through some wine advocate stuff last year and Shilpnect, uh if that's how you pronounce it, I apologize if that's wrong. Loved the 2010s and kind of preemptively blew up the 2011s. Hmm. saying that he loved them in barrel, but didn't want to talk about reviews until this time. So for those of you who follow that, um, he's probably going to blow these up like crazy, and it'll be an interesting point of comparison for what we think of it mm -hmm. down the road. Stank, even dirty. <laughs> <laughs> it's that march right there. D totally. In a good way, though. Dirty, this dirty. is getting almost like this. Some of similar flavors than the Winderly, but like uh, muddy. Yeah, totally. You know, right, just wet forest floor. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. like, stuff's been stuff's been sitting in the mud for a while. You've been out hiking and stomping through a strawberry field or something, you know. <laughs> Darker fruits too. I yeah. think more like the cherries than the mm -hmm. than like the strawberries, and not so much the rose petals you're talking about, right? Like no, no. more towards the potpourri, like the spicy bark and cloves. Yeah. Yes, I, I agree. <laughs> it's got like almost just a, like a hint of like a spice. It's like. It's weird. It's, I don't want to say like a persimmon, but kind of like persimmon. Mm -hmm. You know, where it's got that like weird clovey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, stuff. totally. I, I tend to default to like, you know, rosemary or something, but it's not that sort of mm -hmm. uh, herbaceousness or, or, or spice. It's more of that like cardamom type family. I like that. Yeah. yeah. It smells, it smells wonderful. wonderful. Yeah, it smells wonderful. Mm. Whoa. Super juicy on yeah. contact. Like, like perfect raspberries when you bite into them and it makes your mouth water more. Mm -hmm. Le much less, much less acidic than the first one mm -hmm. up front. Mm -hmm. Like it's just like it starts a little more lush, but those raspberry fruits are just like pop. Wow, man. <laughs> <laughs> the way the flavor just literally like overtakes the entire tongue mm -hmm. and then sits there for a little bit and then like as it's swallowed, there's more intensity of flavor. And it keeps for on a going. Split second and then finish, yeah. It's like the Energizer Bunny in our mouth right now. True. <laughs> <laughs> the Energizer Bunny of wine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Much dirtier raspberries too. It's just like yeah. again, this was was much more like delicate, luscious, like lighter fruits. This is just like. 
pull the strawberry or raspberry right out of the ground and it's just covered in dirt. I guess raspberries don't come out of the ground, but you know, it's yeah. just covered in dirt and mud and, and eat that's it. what it is. And they eat it. Man, the tannins still have like a little bit of youthful character to them. Mm -hmm. um, they kind of sit at the tip of your tongue, too. Yeah, and they, and they but they, they stay light, right? They never overwhelm the acidity or the fruit. Mm -hmm. They just give kind of like some full structure to it. And actually, you know, like I look forward again to it aging and softening out even more, but I think there are some people who would love this right now. If you like yeah. a little more tannin in your wine, this is, in my mind, like a surprisingly good example of fuller tannins that aren't too grippy or, or troublesome, right? Like it's it's full bodied and still really elegant. It just kind of rounds everything out of it, like gives it a little more like of that structure without being too fatty. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, there's nothing about this wine that's too fatty, but the intensity of it is, mm -hmm. is amazing, right? Like it's very light. You can still call it delicate because it is, right? Like light on the palate. Um, and the flavors have, uh, or the structure has a delicate feel to it, but man, the amount of intensity of flavor is surprising. And uh, the way at which it goes about it, like raspberries, fruits early on, I'm getting on a big thing of like the ruby red grapefruit sort of. Sure, but you're right. There's one that, that the, the fruit yeah. starts to tarten up, mm -hmm. um, but just juicy and delicious, like not rich, not, there's no richness here, there's no weight or reduction, like it's, it's just pure and really beautiful, so. 93. 93 plus. I was going to say the exact same thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's such it's, a good expression of like Dundee and the Marsh Vineyard especially. It's just like, it's everything that Oregon Pinot should be. The best 2001 that I've had so far. I will say that. Yeah, the, the finish is really grabbing me. Compelling. Like after you swallow, there's evolution and complexity. The fruits change. The acidity lingers. Your mouth waters. Like... I, I would say, like, be careful about drinking this with food, right? Because I think you lose some of that nuance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, unless you were just having it with some simple cheese or something like that. I mean, if you are having it with dinner, I'd say do yourself and your guests a favor and at least have a glass uh, without a lot of distraction. Um, and it's also one of those, those, like, really interesting wines that, you know, if, I, if, you had, <laughs> yeah, if you have six of them, like, go ahead and drink one early and don't feel bad about it because this is delicious right now i like, wish i had six of them <laughs> yeah I, I totally think it'll improve um but uh but it's showing really high quality Oregon peanut butter noir characteristics right now totally I, boy is it it's probably all gone even right like i think there's a little bit around still like some okay. places so because it hasn't gotten blown up completely yet right right yeah so. the, the main but so i guess we're, we're blowing it up now right and we say we say a lot of times like if you don't live in oregon like get a hold of the winery. In this case, they're probably out of it, but email them. Mm -hmm. And just Google some of the top top retail shops in in Oregon, like some some may still have them. Yeah, you know, so. It's interesting, it's like I, you know, his 2010, the 2010 of the March was my favorite 2010 of the year. And uh -huh. I think I would agree that 2011 is, I mean, it's I haven't had a lot of So far, so, yeah. uh, we've, and we've had a fair amount during this show, we've been trying to pound through some of the 11s, and man, this is, Next level. This is awesome. It's really good. <laughs> Did you score it? Yet? Not yet. No. I, I mean, I, I'm I, I'm deciding whether to be a copycat or not. But, but I, I, sure, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say 93 two. You're getting into weird space. What pushes it up from there? What pushes it down? Um, so you know, so maybe someone going first influences that a little bit. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, However you cut it, wherever the numbers fall, this is fantastic. You know, there's still quite a few things left to be released. That's exciting. Uh, but this is this is really well done, and I, I, I happily recommend it. Oh, uh, price points on these? 40, 40 and 50 and 45, or something? Right? 40 and 45. No, a 45 and 55, I think. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the, the, the marsh is a, a bit expensive. You know, right in there, right in line with the, the your, your upper tier reserve stuff, not, you know, not like the tip-top $75, $80, $100 bottles. Um, which, frankly, I think this competes with. Um, I should have been buying this before. <laughs> <laughs> Told you so. Yeah. Told you so. No, this is the whole reason we're doing this show is because Matt had, had, had sent us the mailer for this wine and was like, you should buy some. And so I bit this time. I was like, okay, I'll buy two of each, right? And then you bought one of each. I bought one of each just for the show because uh, I, I wasn't so in love with the 2010s. But but I'm like you know we should we should talk about him right like yes yeah. he, he, he's someone's excited about something it's fun to do yeah, a show yeah get mad on the show it's, yeah. yeah it's a good time 
Thanks for, you know, thanks yeah. for pushing us towards this. No worries. <laughs> I think awesome. I'm actually, I have five bottles of each still, and I think I'm going to go buy some more. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one more thing I wanted to do before we get to the question. Uh, let's give a shout out to one of our YouTube viewers. That's not our main platform, right? Like Facebook and the website is where I interact pretty regularly. I see the comments. Chad sees a lot of the comments. We'll respond to things. Yep. YouTube, I check in on maybe once a month. Uh, but I discovered uh, Juan Alvarez has been watching for a while, has commented on a number of episodes. Uh, want to say thanks for getting involved um, and respond to one of your comments on the show. I did in the comments as well, but, but he said like he wants to hear a little more criticism for us, that we're too nice. I want to acknowledge that that's true. David that, Pierce said that too. That's feedback, we get. that's feedback we get from a lot of people we really respect. And I think that's kind of a flaw we accept. Um, we're going to try and do better at it, and like, like when we hear it from people like that, like it, it, it's kind of good to get it in our minds, but I, I, want, I want people who watch to know too that we do put some intent into what we select, whether it's these are bottles I had and really enjoyed and we wanted to do on the show, or these are wines made by producers. We like you know 90% of what we do and that's what we pick for the show. Right. Um, rarely are we grabbing things randomly, so mm -hmm. that's kind of why we tend to be on the more positive side. and. Uh, and and will be. I don't, I don't see that changing. Yeah. Oh, well, a lot of the wine we do on the show is delicious. Right? We, we, we're trying to share the stuff we're excited about. Right. right. I mean, if we wanted to hate monger, we could. We could grab, start grabbing stuff from the middle of the shelf, tell you either to buy it or not to buy it and whatever. But a lot of times we're wanting to like share stuff with you guys that we're excited about. So Yeah. That'd be a different and this show. Is, exactly. And this is, this is one of those shows. Mm -hmm. so. so, but anyway, and these. thanks for watching. Thanks for providing honest criticism. And, uh... Yeah, we'll yeah keep, keep providing us criticism. We, we appreciate it. So. Stay classy. <laughs> <laughs> question of the day. You got to ask yeah, the question. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't even think of one before. Um, well, you're, you're flying soon? Yeah, you're I'm you're flying to Honduras tomorrow. I'm going to try and bring uh, some some Honduran wine back. To, you know, just like Whoa, Jamaica. Like, yeah. I don't even know if they grow wine in Honduras, but we can find either. out. So, how about this question of the day? If you've had any Central American wines, whether from Honduras or anywhere else in Central America. South of Mexico? Right? Yeah, south, anything south of Mexico. Um, what are your favorites? You know, what are your least favorites? What are your opinions just in general on Central American wines? Who knows if they're out there? I'm sure there are, but yeah. It's Let's true, see. we've got a couple international viewers. Like, that would be awesome to hear. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. So, I don't think I've had any Central American wines. I know I haven't. No. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, like. Definitely yeah. down in Argentina, like that's like you know, right. I think I've had stuff from Uruguay, but that's still south, right? Oh, that's a knot. Yeah, that's that's, <laughs> that's, that's that's still south. So all right, well, yeah. So that's the show. Thanks, everybody. See, See you guys next time. time.